Hi. Good day. Have I got broccoli in my teeth? No. Today, we are showing you the glorious difference in our new Dyneema plasma rope and our old steel rope. Now, if you've watched any of our other videos, this is a part of our winch series that we've did, done a whole overhaul of the, uh, of the winch. Um, now, part of the overhaul, obviously, we had been running steel cable. No particular reason other than we just had never bothered to change it, really. Um, so one of the things uh, we've decided to do, when we do a lot of these things, we tend to want to do them properly. And, um, you know, I had a look at Warren's illustrated parts for their 9.5 XPS, which is the synthetic version of the 9.5 XP. Just have a bit of a perusal to see if there was actually any difference. Now Warren lists a different part number for the drum, but I don't believe there's actually any difference really in the drum, but I'm not entirely sure anyone else out there who has a bit of knowledge. But basically there isn't really any difference, like the, the parts list, the only different items were the actual synthetic rope itself and the fairly. So what I'm saying is you can, of course, convert a um, low mount style winch into a Dyneema rope conversion, no problem. But we're looking at the, um, the components, so there's sort of, the rope is going to be a consumable, but all the other items, um, you know, are not. I guess we want to start with the fair lead. The fair lead's an interesting one. I did some research about, um, you know, obviously you want to use what's called a horse fair lead. And um, it turns out that fair leads ain't fair leads. Isn't that true, Kate? So the bulk of fair leads out there, and they're probably fine, are just basically a polished, smoothed aluminium. Nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it's light. Um, and you, what they've found, though, in, in, and we're looking at the fair lead is something that's going to be on the vehicle for, forever, basically. So, you know, over time, these um, polished aluminium, because it's not real hard, it tends to um, abrade and it can get a bit rough and it can um, affect the rope, you know, and if you get a bit of grit in the rope and as it's pulling through that fair lead, it can actually gouge or damage that surface. So what you actually really ideally want in a fair lead is the lightweight machined aluminium, but um, what a hard anodized is what they actually use. It's called a type 3 anodizing. There's type 1 and type 2 are basically more cosmetic, like um, probably like this. Th that just gives you that color. But a type 3 anodized is actually forms a really, really, really hard barrier. Apparently as hard as on, like sapphire. sapphire. So it's like almost diamond hardness, you know. And so we, in the course of um, looking at gear, I've basically fallen in love with a company from the United States, the good old USA, called Factor 55. Um, definitely... I love their branding as well, it must be said. Yeah, I like everything about their products, except the price. It's really expensive, but it is really good quality. Well, that's the thing, it's an old, um, old adage if you want, you know, light, what is it? Light, cheap, strong, light, strong. Cheap, light, strong. You, gotta, you can only um, have two. These are very light and they're very strong, but they're not cheap, but there's a reason for that. You know, it does, I think their quality does reflect the price and I think that there's reason for it. They have kind of reinvented the wheel. Like the, for a start, this Fairlead opening is bigger than your typical Fairlead. And one of the reasons it is, is it's designed to be able to um, fit the the spool. If you've, on, on a winch rope, the, um, the eye can actually go through there so that you can butt up your um, um, hook or um, you know whatever you're using. I like the fact that you said the word butt up because I think it looks like a butt plug. It does actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you're using a, a butt plug or whatever you're using to hook up your... And also it's quite thick, you can see it's a, a lot um, thicker and, 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 and it allows it to have these machine surfaces have a higher, a bigger radius, you know, just little things like that. But the particular the quality of it is that type 3 anodizing it's it's not a cheap process and most of the fair leads out there you'll find will not have it and but it does form that really so that's the theory anyway uh, over time even as that rope gets dirty gets you know grit in it and all that as it's dragging across there, and you can imagine it's pulling across there quite hard 
it's not going to scratch that or and furthermore again this rope because it's made out of so many tiny fibers and they really do catch on everything even you know if, if on a poorer quality um fair lead if they did have those scratches in it and like you know those minor abrasions and i'm sure that the rope would catch on that and that again would just cause yeah and time and, and also just time. cause you grief frankly yeah so a good quality fair lead i thought was a fairly essential because the fair lead like is something that's going to stay it's part of the vehicle it's, and doesn't it look nice but it's it's going to be part of that so yeah factor 55 well i think what's great about factor 55 among many other things besides the quality is like kate said they really do seem to have rethought the the whole winch game this is a good example this is their now they're not of course the only company that makes one of these and these are the most expensive ones out there but again you should be able to keep this forever this is something that you you know um this is a their pulley blocks for the rope so it's really interesting because we're going to show you soon some of the what we've pulled out when because replacing your um winch rope from steel to fabric is not just a matter of changing the rope it, it, it opens up options to be able to do a whole bunch of other things um, and you know for instance that's a steel pulley block heavy cumbersome big you know effective but, and this is the pulley block that you can now use to replace it when you when you're running Dyneema I'll just talk about this for a minute um, or do you want to explain it you know much more about this than oh I it's just he just Jade has been absolutely obsessed with this I think he showed me videos of them about 10 times and pictures and like have I told you about the fact of if you're like yes Jade yeah you have we have actually discussed this at length mm. um, the man loves these he dreams about them like he is obsessed <laughs> no I just I do I love their gear I think it's really good I just think what they're doing with as far as you know changing the way we look at winching I guess I mean I know that what they do isn't necessarily reinventing the wheel but they're they're perfecting it I think and um so a lot of there are uh, many other companies that make pulley blocks like this but factor 55 has got a few little things that um you know again this radius here and this lip and not all companies have that where it sits up there so the rope doesn't actually run on this flange here it runs across there and probably more than anything this uh, silicon here it's just a little touch but it actually is if you get a momentary slack in your rope you know that it doesn't pop out so I mean it's just a good now I don't know to my knowledge no other company is um, doing that um, they also this is not a factor 55 one we're going we will get a factor 55 hitch link but theirs actually has a machine radius in here as well so that you can run a soft shackle in it mm. you know just things like that and, and another area where they really have reinvented the wheel is you know the old hook that is the hook that traditionally runs on steel cable and also Dyneema rope now it's an interesting thing because this hook is really just adapted from rigging the rigging industry you know this is stuff i didn't really think about a lot but it's not really an ideal type of instrument for a four-wheel drive recovery you know um it's that's it's a lifting hook for a start it's not a pulling hook it has a weak point here it's not that's the only safety thing on it it's not a closed system there's a whole bunch of things that really and you know, Factor 55 have taken this and just basically done this with it. Please. Yeah, so um, look, we've gone with their ProLink. They actually have a whole bunch of different types of solutions, all closed system type winches. This is a ProLink. I quite like it, it's neat. It has that rubber, you can that'll be able to go right up against that fair lead and it'll retract in like that. They're the first people, in fact, 55 the first people to, you know, reinvent something like this. Well, this particular part, I believe, yeah. 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 I mean, I must say, I think that's just, it really does show so much innovation. Like, it's very easy when you use things to continue to use the same old things that you've used for years. Yeah. But it really says, and, and you know, maybe make it a little bit better or neater, but mm. completely reinvent something and to look at it and say, actually, this could be made so much better and to create mm. something like that, as you say, is just like, 
It makes so much sense. Why well, it's a lovely bit of kit because they've got a whole bunch of options. They they have actually re they have their own hook called the Ultra Hook, a very interesting device. I think it's probably a bit over the top, but it's really cool. I might one day get one. Hopefully, maybe. That means probably in two weeks' time. <laughs> this allows you just to run a soft shackle or a bow shackle. We still use conventional steel bow shackles um, a lot of times, although we will be using soft shackles as well, um, especially obviously for these things. But yeah, so they've got a whole, they've got um, this ProLink and. Um, Look, we'll put up uh, uh, what the, some of the different solutions, closed system winch solutions they've got for the end of year. Right. Um, and not to mention um, the fact that you can splice this, which is a actually quite fun, um, yeah. and also you know so handy when you're in in the bush if, to think that if something goes wrong, um, that not only when it snaps but it just falls to the ground um, without having nearly the you know bullet like. Um, power in it that the steel cable has when it breaks really really dangerous um yeah. but also indeed safety is a big that should it there it have um difficulties then we can uh, just splice it up together it just that uh, well well just perfectly and tom you might want to explain this again factor 55 well it's another little innovation that they've done it's a really nice splicing kit and you can of course there's loads of ways of splicing a rope you don't you don't need this really you don't need this it makes it so much easier um, and so much better and it, it's just it makes it an easy enjoyable process yeah. fit tools have been around for a long time but factor 55 have designed one for the four-wheel driver for four-wheel drive winch ropes you know with the a little chart here with your rope diameters and I must say, your bury depth, so if you've got a 3 8 rope or whatever, that tells you how far you need to bury it to splice it. It's really handy. It's designed to, to unscrew, so it's compact, it fits in that nice little case. I mean, why wouldn't you have one? The only thing that I would say, um, and in fact, 55 are watching this, um, one thing that I was hoping that this would have, and I think would really improve it, is just some kind of little um, that instruction would booklet. Or, it's, you know, if it's just a something piece of in paper. Here, more like I think like splicing isn't a difficult thing it's pretty straightforward um, my issue whenever I'm doing anything like this any anything really is have I missed something when I'm doing it at the end did I definitely do that right and I think just having like a small step by step process to remind you what you do need yeah um, would be really handy it when you're out good. in the bush and and you know maybe your nerves are slightly frayed or um, you know you don't know what position you're going to be in that part time or how long it's going to have been since you did you know do your practice splice. Mm. I think a little instruction book. And you might not have YouTube handy. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've actually, though, I have actually um, saved a couple of Factor 55's um, tutorials on splicing and I've saved it to my YouTube. So that's a good idea to do for other people. Yeah. I think that's a really, that seems like a really good idea so that we can have that. But I think just a little booklet would really yeah. make this product um, perfect. Yeah, and so that reminds me, there is one other thing like we haven't, we could pull this apart and show you, but they also have done away with the traditional um, spool, the steel spool. They've actually, this here has a titanium pin that goes through here. And the load spool is um, just an aluminium load spool, but it, as you can see, it sits inside the pro link. So there is nothing sticking out of here. And the reason that's important is, like I said to you before about fair leads. Fair leads need to be nice and smooth and so having nothing you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, although this is quite a strong surface it probably wouldn't damage it but you, you really want to try and make sure that you know so there's this is all just fabric here there's no the load spools inside there mm. yeah, good sure. system so with that in mind thanks Factor 55 we, we'll, we will point out that we have not got any sponsorship or we're not uh, paid anything or for this just think that or I are. bought all this out of my own hard won dough but yeah I think you know after a lot of research um, online you know we've, it's just a company that we've really fallen in love with so no we're not we're not sponsored or supported by them at all we just think they're really cool yeah they are really cool yeah. so let's see how much it all weighs when you look at this you know lightweight Dyneema rope compared to that very cumbersome um, steel cable which is honestly no fun to coil please don't undo it again it was really quite difficult yeah um just to handling this the, the fair stuff. lead in comparison to the um 
the roll of fair lead that we had before, which weighs a bloody ton. Um, you know, the hooks and everything compared to this, is, you know, it's just, it's so much better, not to mention um, the fact that you can splice. So that's what's going in. And that's what's coming out. And um, we're going to take it in now and weigh it, basically. Yeah, man. Cop that. So it's 22 kilos. Hmm. Barely, barely makes a dent on the scales, doesn't it? I mean, that's significant, isn't it? I've got one, I'm only carrying one hand. Try carrying that gear in one hand. Right. Well, there you have it, folks. So, uh, as we like to say in the business, the numbers don't lie. You can see there's a fairly significant weight saver. Of course, weight isn't everything. We, we, we obviously, another huge advantage with going for this setup is the safety factor. Uh, much more important, really, let's face it. And just the ease of use. I mean, just. Just handling this is, you know, it's just, it's no different to, it's just a rope, just a rope. Whereas that, you know, really you need to wear rigging gloves, you can have sharp bits sticking out. And obviously we, we all know what happens if, when steel cable breaks. We, we, if, you, if you're interested, watch Ronnie Dahl's video on, on that sort of stuff. But um, we won't, yeah. Safety um, is, is, is probably the number one key. Like I said, I still believe that there is a place for steel cable. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. It works really effectively. It's really strong. It's really dependable. And we've, you know, used it for years without any issue at all. It's yep. gotten out of lots of issues, and, you know. The safety factor is mitigated by good practices, good mm. techniques, winch uh, dampeners, keeping everyone clear. You know, really, you know, most accidents happen because people are not doing the right thing. And maybe that's, you know, a key uh, thing to remember any time you're winching. So you really have to be aware that it is a dangerous thing to be doing and you really do have to have your wits about you and think very carefully about every stage of it. I have only recently seen some freaking crazy winching things that people do. Um, good Lord. Like, just, you know, be really sensible with this. This is... Um, this is always equipment that can really hurt you and do a lot of damage and yeah. you always have to be mindful of that whenever you're doing it. Yeah, and we, we obviously have this winch, not, we're not interested in, you know, going out there and winching for winching's sake, you know, or taking on every gnarly track. Like if there's a beeline, we'll take the beeline. It's about getting where we want to go over land. That's our primary objective. And the main reason that the winch is really critical for us is because we travel solo so often and there's nobody else there to get us out of the poo so we do you know really depend on our winch or we can we have at times you know been, would have been stuck oh, if not for the winch. yeah and so, i think not even just that like part of it is the peace of mind there's been like what you know recently we've been doing these videos and we haven't had our winch handy there's been lots of times that we've had to get out and look at the track ahead and really ask ourselves can we do this we don't have a winch like having the winch in the front is just, and it's like having the two spares. Or the diff lock. Do you need it? Probably not. Probably don't need it at all. Do you want to have it in case you do need it? Yeah, you definitely do. Otherwise you can't go down those tracks. You can't go to the remote places. Not, not is... with that sort of um, impunity, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, I totally else. agree. But as we've probably shown in this video, as this series, don't think that just having a winch in the front is going to be you know bolt it there forget it's not a fit and forget item um, they do require maintenance and they do require regular inspections they're out there on the front of the vehicle they get exposed to the mud and the rain and the water when you're going through crossings they're not as well sealed as perhaps maybe manufacturers might lead you to believe so um, but you know and there's, there's reason for that they do suffer a lot of they get put a lot of the old winches and yeah, um, yeah it, again it's just that thought process of we have the winch not because we think we are going to need it but in case we do need it hmm. so to speak and you know part of that is knowing when we do use it that it's going to work yeah we want to we want to be sure that it's going to do what it's there to do in, wanna, in the times we need it. Yeah, I don't want to be firing up and thinking, oh, I wish we'd um, pulled this apart more recently. I have no idea what the engines were or what the 
brush assembly is like or if the gear system is, you know, we, you need to know, you need to be able to rely on it. Now that's shackled can't hit the fair lead as well, which is great. But it will need to be cable tied, need to be safety. Cool, job done. Okay, so we've obviously just put our new um, Dyneema rope on with the Factor 55 Pro Link. Um, we probably are going to go to their Ultra Hook eventually. Now, one other thing, we talked about free spool issues. And we talked about when we rebuilt the gearbox using minimal grease, using that NLGI one something thin. So <laughs> let's see, let's put our money where our mouth is and uh, oh, put dear. it into free spool and see uh, how it goes. Um, Going to switch the lever here now. To free that spool. was actually quite a lot of work to try and get this to work. So it's a let's see. Let's actually no, it's really easy. Really easy. And that's what you want, you know. I can do. In fact. One finger, no problem at all. So yeah. It's quite successful. It was a success. All those hours taking the gearbox apart and clearing it up and... Uh... High five! <laughs> it's good, I'm really happy with it. You know, um, I love the fair lead. Love the Factor 55 gear. And um, yeah, I think we're gonna say goodbye to steel cable forever definitely been worthwhile it's going to make life a lot easier next time we get stuck in the bush and i have to drag that thing up a hill while jade lounges in his driver's seat yeah. thanks so much for tuning in on us uh, continuing to be idiots um just uh, playing around with our new toys and stuff and facts 55 um i hope this has been helpful for anybody who is thinking about doing a passport conversion um in the end we worked out it saved us roughly 15 kilograms of weight which may not seem like very much but um it every little helps with this game. Um, more room for beer. More room for beer. Yep. Anyway, if... Uh, I put on 15 kilos in the last 12 months, so it makes up for that. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please uh, please continue to enjoy our videos. We really appreciate any support that you guys give us. Um, any of your likes and comments really means a world to us. Um, so if you have enjoyed this, please uh, like it and give us a subscribe and press that little bell so you can get some notifications from us. We're releasing videos every week um, and I hope you enjoy watching them as much as we enjoy making them. Yeah, indeed. Well said. So you can't help yourself. You're playing with it too. It's just such a beautiful <laughs> it's very, item. It's, it's very tactile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.